$140 an hour. That is what you pay on average for a mechanic to work on your vehicle, which means if I paid myself to work on my cars, I would be dead broke. But also, incredibly rich. But there is one service that has always eluded me, and it's called a wheel alignment. Don't ask why I'm holding a wrench. Because the equipment they use is incredibly expensive and no one has it in a normal garage. However, I came across a tool on the interwebs that might just replace the need to ever have to pay for an alignment again. I also have a horrible record of my car getting damaged while it's being serviced no matter where I take it. I hate paying for stuff. That is the goal today, getting the Makaha Runner pre-runner project aligned properly because I'm chewing the crap out of my tires. So aloha and welcome back to the garage. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to paradise. In the area in which I live, the cheapest alignment that I can get is a four-wheel alignment, $101 at Firestone. However, I've learned the hard way that Firestone doesn't necessarily hire the most talented of individuals. I also think it's silly that they only offer a four-wheel alignment for my Silverado. And as I was trying to explain to the gentleman at the front desk, you can't align the rear end on this truck. He was very determined to say they can and they needed to charge for a four-wheel alignment. And I realized that I was arguing with the gentleman at the front desk of a Firestone, so. I let that one go. And not all mechanics at this named location are poor. I've just had really bad luck a couple of times. And at $101 an alignment, it adds up fairly quickly, especially if you change up your suspension kind of often. And believe it or not, this is it. So the first thing we're actually gonna do today is swap back to our stock alignment cams. If you're new around here, this truck is a little bit far from stock. I've always been kind of obsessed with pre-runners yet to have ever been around one, so I came up with a stupid idea to try to build one myself, and this is our current progress. But in installing our new suspension setup, I thought I was being brilliant by swapping over to our Dirt King alignment cams. These GM trucks are notorious for constantly knocking themselves out of alignment. Your stock alignment cam is gonna look like this. Now this makes it incredible incredibly easy for shops to align your vehicle. You have that specifically cut hole with a special bolt and all they have to do is turn that bolt and you're able to adjust your camber and or caster here on your upper control arm. However, no matter how tight you tighten that bolt on there, if you hit a big bump, guess what? That shifts and then you knock yourself out of alignment and you're out another $101 for a four wheel alignment even though this truck you got it. However, after getting this buttoned up and installed, I realized that you're supposed to align it with the stock alignment cams first, and then mark and then swap over to the Dirt King alignment cams. So the truck's currently sitting with just a little bit of rake. The rear end's about half an inch higher than the front. Those King shocks are actually adjustable. That top hat spins, and you actually spin it to give yourself just a little more height. So we're gonna adjust that down about half an inch, and then we'll go ahead and throw everything back on this driver's side, do the exact same thing on the passenger. She actually looks a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. The tires are pretty straight. So what we're gonna do is actually take a quick drive around the neighborhood, about a mile or so, to try to let the suspension settle as much as possible. And then we'll back it back into the garage on the most level surface as we can. It doesn't matter if it's perfectly level or not, it just has to be approximately level because you actually zero out the tool that we're gonna be utilizing. To the alignment specifications which we're going to be adjusting our 2007 Silverado 2. There's three things on here we're going to be adjusting. It's caster, camber, and toe and you do it in that order. First off with the caster adjustment we want between 3.4 and 3.65. Call it 3.4 degrees of positive caster and essentially what that means is that upper control arm is a little bit further back than your lower control arm which allows your steering wheel to straighten up once you make a turn and you're continuing straight on. Now if you want additional details on what caster, camber, and toe actually do do. 
There are dozens of channels out there that explain it much better than I possibly could. Next up with the camber, we have about negative one to 1.5 degrees of negative camber. That is not the spec coming from Chevy. That is actually from the folks much more intelligent than myself that manufacture this long travel kit. And then with the tow, 0.1 degree sum of tow. Where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> what we're gonna be using for all of this is in this simple bag from Quick Trick Alignment Solutions. Like I mentioned, this is not a new technology nor device or equipment. This is actually kind of old, but this is the fourth generation of their equipment. So I'm hoping by now, They've got it dialed in. Also, just out of respect for everybody, this is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. And again, it is not cheap, but hopefully it's gonna be worth my while because I'm so sick of paying shops to do this for me. And it turns out that I didn't have to do all that research on the specs because Quick Trick has a database with all the specs. So we're just gonna double check what I got is correct. All right, guys, our Quick Trick alignment equipment. It's actually not very many pieces at all. Essentially what this is, you got a piece that goes across, a piece that goes up and down on your wheel. This connects to your wheel from these little fingers. You also have these little silicone rubber covers to protect your wheel from scuffing. And these things, which are pretty cool, are, are digital levels. It also comes with two of the tape measures built to slide into here. And you actually pull the tape measure across to measure your toe. We also bought all the accessories. But this is gonna hold your steering wheel straight while you make all these adjustments. And last but not least, we got the DJ turntables. Actually, these are the turn plates. You actually can drive up on these, turn the wheel 20 degrees, 20 degrees to get our caster measurement on both sides without any issues with the tires gripping on the floor and things like this. I have not used this yet, so we're gonna be figuring this out as we go. So uh, let's get the truck set up. And you also have this grip tape on the back, so this thing still actually slide out from under. Tires. <laughs> Tires are a little bit large, but I think it's working. Homeboy is stoked. Yeah. All right, now that our steering wheel is locked in place by our little dude, we're gonna go ahead and get some of this equipment set up on our wheel. Here comes the fun part. All right guys, a little bit of a pain getting this set up. Put some scotch tape down so we're not scratching up our rims. And basically this vertical is at 90 degrees in accordance to the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this to the upright. Oh wow, that wasn't that bad. 0.6 degrees positive camber. That's not bad for an eyeball. So what we're going to do is turn a wheel 20 degrees. We're gonna zero out our digital level, and then turn it 40 degrees in the other direction. And that will give us a number. We're gonna multiply that by 1.5 and that's gonna be our caster reading. All right, so there's the 1.6 and then multiply that 1.5. 2.4 degrees of positive caster, which is actually a lot closer than I thought we would be. And if you look at the adjustment points on this silver rod, you have your upper control arm with our two alignment cams and our tie rod. We're not touching our tie rod yet. We're gonna see what we can do for our caster by just using our alignment pins here. So positive caster, upper control arm, ball joint is a little bit further behind your lower. So I'm gonna pull the upper control arm rearward inward as far as it goes just to see how much positive caster I can get out of my upper control arm. Zero this guy out. So I overshot by quite a bit. So I'm not 4.5 degrees of positive caster. All right, let's try this again. This one's gonna be on the money, I know it. Whew, third time to charm, there it is. 2.2 degrees, multiply that by 1.5, that puts us at 3.3. So spec on the driver's side shows 3.4 to 3.65 with plus or minus one degree. We got it dialed in to 3.3. Next up is camber. It's 1 a.m. So I'm gonna go to bed. See you in the morning. Good morning. We went ahead and adjusted our caster on the passenger side and we're within spec now. So essentially the same exact thing we did on the driver's side, we duplicated here. We pulled the back side upper control arm inward just a bit, which put us about 3.6 degrees. We're on the upper end, but that's fine because this is gonna change. Hi, good morning because it's gonna change slightly as we pull this control arm in. So our next step is to adjust our camber. Now camber's quite a bit easy to measure on this thing. We made sure we're still snugged up here. We took our level, zeroed it out on the ground underneath the tires. We're sitting at negative 
0.3 degrees of negative camber. So we need one more degree out of this thing. And what I'm gonna do is pull the control arms inward again, but at equal amounts. So what I'm gonna do is mark my alignment cams on both sides so I know where we're starting and we're gonna pull it in. We need one degree. Let's go get one degree. Shoots. I love it when things go correctly. We adjusted our camber and it's at just under negative one. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. And I just rechecked the caster and we're actually now at 3.45, which puts us exactly within tolerance. However, we still need to adjust camera on the driver's side. So I'm gonna open up the garage. This is kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. So we got our negative camber that we needed. Our caster is 3.6 degrees positive here and 3.5 or 3.45 on this side, which is dead on within spec. We got the positive caster we need. We got the negative camber we need. Now we got to fix last and most importantly, our toe. Well, it turns out I am way towed out. And as you look at the measurements here, we are 94 and three quarters there in the front and we're 93 and about a half. We're off significantly. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the passenger side first and see where we are. All right, we've put in about 14 miles walking from there to there to there to there, but we are dialed, like dialed. On the front end, front toe, we are 94 and 116 inch from the other side. And on the back side, we are 94 and 2 16 This puts us just below 0.1 inches, which is perfect to spec. So we have our caster, we got our camber, we now have our toe in, and we use all these crazy lines hanging and whatnot just to ensure that we were straight as can be. So toe is perfect. However, I can't confirm if this is exactly perfect. I've measured it as close as possible and I wanna say yes, but only a test drive is gonna tell us. By the way, it's so humid today that my garage floor is wet, like it's wet, it hasn't rained a drop. This is how humid it is today. You ready for the bumps? I'm ready for it. Nothing. It just floats. Nothing. Just floats. Love this truck. straight steering wheel straight oh perfection save myself a hundred dollars and it only cost me six hundred and thirty two dollars I could save myself a hundred dollars but spent six hundred dollars to drive it. And they say I'm not financially responsible. <laughs> well this truck is awesome I love it I love my truck welcome to my way home from work so we took this bad boy today to really kind of put the icing on the cake and the final touch that this is in fact pretty dang awesome. This alignment is dead straight. Not only that, I actually straightened the steering wheel to where I actually like it. Historically, when shops would align this truck, they would put the steering wheel to what they thought was straight and it was never straight, drove me nuts. But I have straightened it, it is amazing. It tracks straight, watch this. Semi-flat road, dead straight, hands off the wheel. It just tracks absolutely straight. We're still going. To be honest, the truck's been drivable for weeks and weeks. It just hasn't felt good. You can kind of tell it just wasn't happy. It would soak up any bump under the sun. It just didn't feel good on just normal driving roads. It feels good now. I'm very happy with that. I can't believe I aligned this thing myself. However, the tires are looking a little rough, and I think it's from 
me being an idiot, not necessarily from what's happening now. <sighs> I need gas and back to the garage. Can I just say how much I love this truck? The alignment turned out pretty dang good. Now, after I drive it for about a week, I'm going to go ahead and remeasure all the measurements from camber to caster to tow in just to make sure that we are still good when everything has settled in. And for my own sanity, I marked the alignment cams on both sides where it currently sits today. Just in case it does get knocked out a little bit, I know it has shifted. We're going to eventually throw our Dirt King locking alignment pins back in there once I know that we are set to go. So the tool definitely definitely did its job. However, I'm blown away that another company hasn't come out and made something better. This tool kind of feels somewhat prehistoric. There's a lot of variability in the measurements, which is my one key feedback for the Quick Trick Alignment Solutions alignment tool. If you don't have that digital alignment tool perfectly butted up against that upright, you can be off by over an entire degree. And the way that it's made, it's made of plastic that's not exactly straight. It has curves at the top and bottom, so it's easy to not have that right. And I can't imagine it would be that difficult to engineer something that sits flush against an aluminum bracket or something that is perfectly 90 so you can sit it perfectly 90 without any question. Everything else seemed pretty solid. I like the little turntable plates. It's really nifty to have, especially when you have 33 going to 37 inch tires. And the other piece of feedback that I do have, I think is price point. I still think it's priced especially too high for what it is. But this seems like one of those niche tools that not a lot of people will be doing this stuff themselves. And it seems like that's still kind of the leading tool for a DIYer like myself. And because you guys have stuck with me till this point in the video, here's a little sneak peek on what is going on our Makaha Runner Silverado project. You've seen the tires, 37, 13 and a half Toyo MTs that are gonna be wrapped around. We got fuel block wheels. Ken Block truly inspired me and the news that came out this last week absolutely floored me. I have never met Ken, but he's inspired an entire generation of automotive enthusiasts. But we love you guys. Thanks for the continued support. We'll catch you guys in a few days for our next video, which is a bit off topic, but it's a spicy one. Aho we hope. Because basically all of like the small bumps in the road, you feel everything is like super stiff, but the big ones just like nothing. Off road. <laughs>